wanted to talk about um, stoicism. Stoicism, okay? My thoughts on stoicism and expecting imperfection in life. And um, I just kind of want to just share my personal thoughts on that and um, why I hate stoicism. Um, So first of all, There was a time where I was so hurt and I felt like I was constantly being hurt by other people in a state of constant disappointment, um, constant anguish almost. And like, it's like every time that I would try to become happy or feel better, it felt like I would be pushed back down to a bad place again, which made me feel like, you know, how do I get to a place where I can't be disappointed anymore? How can I get to a place where I no longer have to experience this type of pain. And so what happens with me being a genius and everything, like I will go down the line of my thought process and um, I will allow myself to literally take it as far as it will go before I come to the conclusion that I come to, which is what I'm going to start like sharing with you guys on here. because I feel like, you know, I feel like I have these thoughts for a reason. I feel like I am um, I am supposed to, like, share these. I feel like that's why I'm even able to allow these thoughts to go down the line in order to share them. I, um, anyways, so I, lo- I allow myself to go down the whole thought process, uh, down the line. But I came to trying to figure out how to not experience that sadness that anguish and that emotion was that the best thing to do is to not expect anything or to not really want anything in the first place and so when I figured that out I was like oh wait that's pretty much the same concept of stoicism like really trying to stay in a state of just expecting things to go wrong or like expecting nothing from anything and just like a statue like that's what the whole like aesthetic of stoicism is anyways a statue and it's just like i was talking to someone the other day and i was saying how like when i tried that it was a very sad and dark place because even though the concept is that you won't feel hurt anymore because you're not expecting anything what what people fail to realize is that you won't experience any happiness either deciding to live in a state of solely the middle and like and really not even just the middle but in a state of nothingness like nothing is zero there's like a negative there and when there's zero there's nothing there's only something to pull from it does that make sense um it's like if there's a state of nothingness then there's also not happiness like that's the easiest way to say it so like when I kind of realized that I um take another sip when I realized that I kind of realized that those people that are fools are the most genius people like literally as I was thinking about how to not be in such a state of anguish I realized why dumb people are so intelligent and people that choose to not learn people that choose to live in that state of like not being the smart one I realized how smart they are and how that whole concept of the dumb blonde that's why they always say blondes have more fun when you think about it the dumb blonde is the one that's having on fun because there's people taking care of her the people that don't know things are the people that are taken care of taken in by society but the people that point out things and that um, that are very aware, very conscious, and show that they're seeing things, and they point out the things that are hard to see, and point out the things that don't people don't want to acknowledge or don't want to talk about. Those are the people that are shut out and shunned from society. And within that same thought, though, I kind of just realized how if you want to experience any kind of peace or happiness from life, it's like you're going to have to allow yourself to just live in that state of wanting something and then possibly experiencing some level of disappointment 
like that's just kind of what's gonna have to happen you know in order for you to really be able to feel all the things that you want from life like you're going to have to experience some level of disappointment and you have to choose that like you have to choose to allow that to happen like with stoicism it's like I don't think that a lot of people realize and recognize that they're choosing a state of depression. You are choosing a state of lack. You are choosing a state of not want. Not not want is the is the opposite of want. And it's like you might think that the opposite of wanting something is not wanting is not wanting a specific thing, but that specific thing is still a thing. But you not wanting anything at all, that is actually nothing. And so you will get nothing. And if you get nothing, you stay where you are. And if you already are not where you want to be, do you get what I mean? It's like, it's so easy to lose the things that motivate you because while you're, while you're trying to live in a state of non-emotion, you will find that emotions are a part of life. And if you're taking that away, you're taking away your life force because if you are a human being, like you're literally made to function not only on logic, like even the, the Greek concept, we'll, we'll call it the Greek concept of logos, ethos, pathos. Like you have the pathos, which is the, um, oh my God, I'm getting, I'm, let me just say it in order because I, I'm gonna get it all mixed up. Logos is logic, ethos is ethics, pathos is basically the emotion, the way that you um, feel about something. We'll say it like that, like passion, that. Um, it's been like five years since I took that class. <laughs> but that concept has always stuck with me because I, as soon as I learned that, I was like, yes, I love this. Logos y dos pathos. So it's like, if you only choose to live with logos, you're only living with one third. It's like choosing one third of your brain or one third of your function to live in. But if you're only choosing pathos, then you're only living with one form of emotion. So a lot of times what will happen is people will choose to be just free and try to only live in the pathos the way of only living by their emotion and then they'll get into some really low states um like financially and just be like really struggling financially which of course will lead to them struggling emotionally and lead to like some other you know bad things going on i just realized that there's some music playing in the background i hope there's a way that i can cut that out um but anyways so There's people that do that, and then there's people that try to live only by ethos. So people that I feel like sometimes I end up trying to do this, like trying to only live in a state of being correct instead of following what I feel or what I want, but like only living by the rules. It's like only living by the rule book. And But the thing with logos, ethos, and pathos is that, especially with ethos, is that it's so hard to agree on what is something that is ethically correct. And then you have to try to use the two other things to try to decide what is ethically correct, which is why it's so difficult in the first place. That's why the government, that's why there's freaking opinions. That's why no one can agree on anything in the first place because everyone has their own ways of operating and thinking. But the point is with stoicism, it's like you trying to only operate without the pathos is not going to lead you to something. So the same way where people are trying to only operate in the state of the pathos, like they're going to end up in some bad financial states with the people of logos a lot of times they'll end up in a really good financial state and be so low emotionally they will be so down bad and they will be wondering in a a state of just boredom cold lack and they'll be like wondering what's missing and then like you know in the movies it's the little sundere thing where they have like the guy that's all like he's so like rich and like finally made it to where he wanted to be and he was so angry before and that drove him to where he wanted to be now he got where he wanted to be and it's just lonely and cold and sad and then you have the girl that's all like pathos and they meet and then he shuns her at first and then they like meet in the middle (laughs) you know but like you know this is a state of reality so unfortunately a lot of times especially these days I feel like I don't I can't speak for the other days but I can speak for these days and I can say that these days there's a lot of things that you do have to figure out for yourself and heal for yourself um just because of the way that humans function right now like the reality is cancel cancel culture exists and it exists in the mindsets of people like i'm noticing for myself how like there's a certain amount of me where i i am learning that something that i have internalized is that it's better to cut people off rather than to work through things sometimes and like that's just very real and i'm from this generation this generation z so like that's something that's very real and of course I learned it from somewhere so it's not like it just came from Gen Z you know what I'm saying so let's keep that in mind as well but anyways um (laughs) 
Um, <laughs> oh my. I can be so aggressive with this talk sometimes. I'm enjoying this though, I really am. <sighs> this is my dream right here. This is part of it. Me vibing, having a coffee, beautiful sky. Let me just turn it around so y'all can see. Chilling outside the grocery store right now. Tiny little thing. The setup is gorgeous. I got my lip gloss on. Like I feel good. I feel really good right now. Um, yeah. But people, they try to like choose one state to live in. With stoicism, they try to um, do like the opposite of hedonism. I think hedonism is the one where you're like only chasing things that bring you pleasure. But in the absence of pleasure, it's literally depression. Like it's literally depression. It's like you feel sad and like nothing is worth anything and everything is meaningless. Like that's literally depression. So you telling yourself not to want anything it's basically like saying, hey, you know, I'm not going to want anything with depression. You literally are telling yourself nothing is important. If you're making yourself not look at anything as important, therefore you won't be upset. Like, you're still going to just only be upset. You're only going to be down or really you're going to be empty. You're going to find the state of numbness. Actually, that's what it is. It's a state of num numbness and not caring. And that is the scariest freaking feeling to feel like you don't care about anything is so scary and then your function alone like your physical function alone is what is carrying you and you trying to grasp and remember why you were after this thing that you're so after why were you after your dream you can't remember and that is the scariest thing you're reading down you're reading everything that you wrote down and why you want this thing so bad and you don't remember i do not recommend stoicism i don't like it i don't like it this has been Emma Valentine, your favorite or what philosopher. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Love y'all. Bye.